Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Blake and Sal Show with Mark. Celebrating its 10-year anniversary, dominating the podcast world. Now sit back and relax, and let's welcome your host, Blake, Sal, and Mark! Hello and welcome to the Blake and Sal Show with Mark, episode number 458. I'm your host, Blake, and I am officially hit wrestling burnout, so this is going to be a very fun show for us. <laughs> Bring on my co-host. First of all, the biggest deal in podcasting, a man who legitimately now has a meme saying he's the biggest deal in podcasting. <laughs> Sal, how you doing? Fuck them kids. Fuck them kids. Yeah, you officially have a meme. I just love the picture because I look all like happy and like <laughs> that picture. I took a picture of you and me from like when I was in town. That's a picture of you and me. I just took me out of it. Oh, wow. <laughs> when we were at the lunch, we were at the lunch. <laughs> That's just from. <laughs> anyway, let's bring on our other co host, the man who's legend, our wrestling historian, the guy who actually we actually opened up the house today because it is gorgeous here finally in Wisconsin. Mark, Dad, how you doing? Doing well, gentlemen, and and. Sal, I hope they got your good side when they've got the picture. He did. Gosh, okay, he okay. Did. so because he paused for a second, he said gentleman and Sal, like Sal's not a gentleman. <laughs> Sal is is, is, he's, that show. It is, Sal is a gentleman. Oh my god. It, it is questionable, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, we're, we're opening up the show with our tradition of, of, of opening with the winners of the WrestleMania main events. And it's so crazy to say that Sammy Zayn and Kevin Owens won the WrestleMania main event. But that is what happened. And we opened last week's show with KO. So this week we opened up with Sammy Zayn. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I've been waiting years to open up the show with the song. So we're good. <laughs> I haven't ever even used the song for more. So there we go. So that's just fun and exciting. So I, I joke that it's finally gorgeous here. When I, I, I literally texted Mandy when I was working this morning saying, I am so fucking sick of this rain. <laughs> it has been raining nonstop since like Thursday night until right right now. <laughs> until right now, like I I been recording this on Wednesday. I am so sick of rain, and I work and I drive in it, and I drove home in T two from T two E two on Friday in a fucking torrential downpour, and like it, it was insanity. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, yeah, up north the river levels are so high now they're worrying about flooding in in the streets and the townships. So we'll see what happens. Hey, yeah, yeah. So tomorrow you're gonna hear my review from T two E two. So the second half of my review, I was planning on recording it at the con, but I had to run out the door and try to get to my car so I can get on the expressway and get home. Well, I got stuck in literal standstill traffic for forty five minutes. So I'm like, you know what? I'm making a microphone. I'm going to record while I'm sitting here in standstill traffic. I'm still sitting. I'm not doing anywhere. I'm not moving. So I'm just going to sit here and record a show before the second half of the podcast. So the second half of the podcast, which is coming up on Saturday morning, is me sitting in my car in standstill traffic in Chicago, in downtown Chicago at 5 in the afternoon. So that's fun. <laughs> Why not? Oh, yeah, yeah. So let's get into this. We have, all, we have a bunch of stuff to get through. I'm hoping not to be here that long, long today because I'm 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 not feeling well. You know, Sal told me he's not feeling well. I I, caught, I think I caught a cold at the con, so like I just want I just want to get in and out of here this week. But we do have a lot of things to get into. So help support the show. Find the you can find the show on our podcast we work on at theblakeshousefor.com. Sal, yeah, you can buy our shirts, stickers, hoodies, uh, 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 gold staples, which you can't really see because of the background, and more. <laughs> Uh, from our T Public store, click on the T Public link on our site, or go to T Public and search the Blake and Sal Show. Hey, do we have our Blake and Sal Show with Mark candy bars in yet? No, that's not a thing. <laughs> that light, I'm actually available. I do have a. I, I'm drinking out of a, a new, a different cup now. I'm holding a Mandy and drinking out of a Stanley cup. 
If you got me one for work, so I'm like, maybe I put a sticker on here just because I can't. <laughs> yeah. no, I, I, I use it every fucking day. I might as well put a sticker on it or something, you know? I, I did just get my Nadine and Mandy show sticker. I put it next to my Blake and Sasha 10th year anniversary sticker on my tablet piece. So oh, that's cool. That was fun to do. Hey, by the way, anybody have a Snickers bar that I can borrow? I Why? do. <laughs> what? I, I'm just chosen for a Snickers ever since I about some said cinnamon that toast crunch. crunch. Yeah. There you go. Uh, it's right here. The, 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 like a sticker, oh, sticker on there. my tablet case. <laughs> there you go. All right. Go. All right. Let's go to break. We'll come right back. All right. Uh, as always, go pick up I Know I Am, Mandy's book, available on Amazon, Barnes Noble, and RNTAP Publishing in English and in Spanish. And it sounds like I'm in a bit of a rush, but literally right before we came on the air, I had just finished editing this week's episode of the Indian and Mandy show. That's going to go up a little bit before us on, on Friday morning. So go listen to that if you haven't listened to it already. I Okay. If you, if you want to hear somebody get drunker and drunker as the show goes on, this is the <laughs> show for you. <laughs> One of your hosts is drunk. One is not. You figure it out by the end of it. It's almost shots, like, shots, shots, shots. Although somebody made drinks and made two really strong drinks, and you could hear it by the end of the show. Oh, I did my best to edit around it. I did my best, but there's not a whole lot you can really do over, you know what I mean, like when you hear somebody getting drunker. Then again, yeah, I, I can't really talk because a couple of weeks ago, um, those two episodes of Puck the Polishes were in our before our anniversary. Uh-huh. You can literally hear me and Mandy getting higher and higher as those episodes continue. Because we should have done it at the beginning of the episode. And we're not thinking anything of it because we figured we'd be done in an hour. But we went over two hours in two different episodes. And you can hear by the end of the second episode, we're literally just giggling to each other because we're so fucking high. <laughs> I know which host was drunk. I guarantee you may. Okay, well, let's get into this real fast. Um what's funny is I looked at my notes. I have like a whole I have a little I have a separate notepad of like history stuff. Hang on. I have a separate notepad for the Blake House show in history stuff for this week in history. And like I had a whole bunch of stuff for like this month. It's not because really we went like weeks without anything. And now we have a whole shitload of stuff for like the month of April. So this week we are going for April 1st, April 7th, because that's the week we're here. And um dad's walking away for some reason. And yeah. um show moments. I wanted him to be here because one of the first show moments involves him on uh, April 3rd, 2013 was dad's first show. Yeah, yeah. For his appearance on the show, episode number two with that day. And actually, if you listen to our archives last Thursday, you can hear his appearance. Um, April 7th, 2014, Sal, you were here in Wisconsin, and you and me sat down and did a live review of WrestleMania 30. That was before the world ended. Well, that was right. At, it was literally mm-hmm. the funny part of that was the day after WrestleMania, after Undertaker's streak ended. So, like, you're like, you sound so fucking depressed. It's actually crazy. I, I listen back. I put it up in an archive like a month or two ago, and you sound so freaking depressed. <laughs> it's crazy. No, I am. <laughs> okay. Uh, first appearance is, first of all, Jason Powell, and I love the fact he put you on the show. Boo. He, uh, he was on the show Boo. April 4th, 2013. Boo. 20, 20, okay. April 6th, 2017, Brian Fritz made his first appearance on this show. Yeah. April 5th, 2018, Rich Fan. Made his yeah. Yeah, that was five years ago. I cannot believe he's been a part of this show for five years. That is crazy to me. And uh, three years ago, in our in the pre WrestleMania, um, the pre WrestleMania um, show that was in the um, performance center, we had Zach Hadorn make his debut on this show as well. Yeah, so, yeah. that was uh, that was a weird show because like that was hysterical because if you're looking back at that show, it's like we have like Zach Hadorn and an edited segment. Kyle Crane's on the show, CJ's on the show, Mandy's on the show because none of us had anything else to do, so like you want to jump on the show? <laughs> like, yeah, that was a weird episode. And for WrestleMania, that was also bizarre. So, yeah. well, that being said, let's do this. And now let's get into the crazy world of professional wrestling. Well, I guess we should really start with the biggest news. <laughs> I'm so glad I found that. It's, um, it never gets old. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm glad I have that back. So, um, we'll, we'll get to WrestleMania. We'll get to the weekend. But we have to start with Monday morning. Because when we all woke up on Monday morning, there was news that Endeavor had purchased WWE. <laughs> That's a sentence I did not expect to say in April. Not going to lie. Did not expect to be talking about this in April. Uh-huh. But Endeavor purchased WWE for $9.6 billion. Not worth it, but okay. For um 51% of the share of the company, it will be merging with UFC. 
under a new company, under Endeavor, um, that will form later. It will be on the stock market. WWE will no longer be on the stock market near the end of the year. It will be under a new UFC. It will be under the code TKO. I am not kidding you. That will be their thing on the on the stock market. I'm not joking about that. They don't have a company name officially yet. Do they stand for Tony Khan? Ooh. <laughs> um, so that is the big news. Vince McMahon is on the board um, with Nick Khan and Dana White. We're not going to go through that whole spiel right now. I'm going to say right now, we're not going to spend the whole time on this because it's not nothing is going to be official till the end of the year. Mm-hmm. By the end of the summer, things are not going to be official. The company is not going to be – all the information, is, it's still fresh. Um, I'm also, as I said at the top of the show, I'm very burnt out. And I am so sick and tired of hearing about Vince McMahon. I'm so sick and tired of hearing about how he may or may not have been on their creative staff on Monday. He was. Good for him. And guess what? If he was just on Monday, I hope I hope that was one of those things where I'm in LA. I'm going to have fun in my old seat. We'll find out Friday. That's one of those things where that's the way Keller's things happen. He was in the building. He's like, hey, Hunter, I'm going to sit in my seat and do my, I'm sorry, hey, Paul, I'm going to sit in my seat and do my thing for a day. Fucked up the entire show. Even though I didn't think it was as bad as everyone says. Apparently, people in the building love the show. People in the building really enjoyed themselves. Eh, what do they know? What they were in the lawyers? building. They to be there. They were paid to be there. You're the, you're the crappy one at home that went to bed early. And, uh... <laughs> From what I understand, he started in one place and ended up in Gorilla as the night went on. Well, it, well, for what I'm hearing, he was in Gorilla all night. But I, I don't care at this point. I think ne- by the time we... Because I'm going to tell people, I'm going to be taking people behind the scenes of the show right now. We will not be talking about WWE on this show again for like three weeks. Yay. Because next week, um, South Enemy is going to be here next week because me and Dad are going to be at AW with Mandy and CJ. So that's going to be next week's show. The week after that, it's a birthday show that's not going to, it's completely breaking format that South didn't even know about yet. And then the week after is an archive show. So we're not going to be talking WWE until Backlash in like three weeks. So mm. I'm not going to stress about who's behind creative right now because all we know is by SmackDown, everything will be back to normal. Or people complained enough where the Endeavor freaking person in charge of Endeavor said to Vince, cut the shit out. You're ruining your own show and ruining your own ratings because now Vince has a boss. Vince actually has a boss now. So that's another thing we have to look into. So um, Sal, thoughts on the Endeavor deal and anything I just kind of vented about? Um, I mean, I guess it's better than what we were fearing was going to happen, which would have been the Saudis buying yeah, um, I, agree so with that. I guess we're thankful for that. I just don't know how, because you know, you know, some point down the road, there's going to be some sort of WWE, UFC combo thingy going on. You know, it's funny. I, I thought about that. I don't know how that would even work. Uh, and, and, like, and, and most like I can see UFC people being on WWE television, like we had celebrities at WrestleMania. It's the same thing. It really mm-hmm. is no different than a Bad Bunny or a Snoop Dogg or sure. a um that guy from I can't think of the um, what, the mm-hmm. other player that was involved. It's the same difference, really. Unless unless one of them's gonna train, like I think Conor McGregor actually wants to train to be a wrestler. If that's okay. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Or like a Ronda Rousey, but like I don't see mm-hmm. that being as big of a problem. Because new style, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean. My my other my other worry is you know you you made it uh, known to me about their pay per view format because I was confused as to why people were complaining about. Oh, I should probably explain that, shouldn't I? I should probably explain yeah. That. So, okay, so yeah, UFC is uh, had to deal with ESPN Plus, which by the way expired in twenty twenty five, and on ESPN Plus the pay per views are over there, and they give ESPN the right to name the price of the pay per views. And so all the hit reviews like $75, $70, $80. WWE's Cockney Peacock is not expired for 2026, so we don't have to worry about that right now. But that's what the whole controversy is about. So, and by the way, there was a big news story that came out of WWE recently to the to the, to the press people that said, tell people not to worry because we have to enter our contracts. And the contract says Peacock for 2026. So we'll just throw that out there. <laughs> but um, I mean, I was also thinking about it too. I mean, WWE still has the WWE network. They could very easily bring it back into the United States, merge it with UFC and call it whatever the fuck they want to call it. Whatever the company's called. <laughs> yeah. And then do it that way. But again, it would not my... be a terrible idea. That would not be terrible. 
I mean, that would yeah. not be bringing UFC people over. They have a huge audience. WWE has a huge right. audience. They probably raise the price a little bit. It won't be 10 bucks, but like they raise the price a little bit. And that's not right. bad. I think it's a problem, you know? I wouldn't even mind yeah. if it was like 25 bucks a month if we're getting everything. If we're still getting everything we're getting right now, you know? Well, yeah, I guess I guess time will tell. It's sort of like Disney and ESPN Plus and Hulu raised their prices, but nobody really bitched because everyone gets a lot of stuff from that package. It's yeah. the same mentality. Like, <laughs> uh, Dad, your thoughts on everything here? Uh, like Sasa's time will tell how this is going to work out and who's going to basically be the uh, be all end all the guru of everything my thing is is my understanding is before Endeavor bought WWE they were high on it because of what Paul has done with the product and raised it up where it was so successful and popular they figured, man, we got to jump on this now when we have the chance, and they did. Now, when someone else wants to kind of take control and monkey around and everything, I don't think that should be done because you're, like, sabotaging your product to fail. Why? I don't get it. You shouldn't. Don't mess with it. People like it. People are watching. You got the attention of a company. You're in a big umbrella now. Don't fuck it up. That's all I'm going to say. I could agree with that sentiment. I could agree with that sentiment big time. And again, his mindset's probably like, well, fuck you. I got my money. I can do whatever I want. Again. Well, at the same time, though, he has a boss. Like I said, he does have a boss. And I can't think of his name right now. I'm going to learn the guy's name. But it, it, if he sees the ratings going down because Vince is interfering, mm -hmm. he actually say something. Vince actually has to answer somebody now. That's well, the difference. When Vince was in charge... Yeah, fuck, you were all screwed because Vince didn't have to answer anybody. Now he has to answer to somebody. But so. the other thing taking count too is all the other pending lawsuits against Vince. Also true. Well, you know, when is a company going to say, you know what, we don't need this bad press. See you, goodbye. I'm going to say one thing. Dana but, White slapped his wife for New Year's Eve. And nothing was done. Nothing was I done. Know. So just I know. keep that in mind. That doesn't be a damn damn thing when Dana White slapped his wife and nobody cared. And just make just make Vince the janitor and have him sweep once in a while. Well, again, I, I for instance, if they want him, if they want him on the board, and they want him there, if he wants to be, I know he loves doing behind the scenes stuff, and he loves making the deals, and he loves real right. dealing. Right. Do that. Right. Good right. for you. I don't understand why you're working at seventy eight, but good for you. I, I still don't have a clue why a seventy eight man that is multi billion dollar that just sold his family company for near ten billion dollars wants to work. I have yeah. zero clue. Because he's yeah. he's one of these he's a workaholic personality. If he doesn't work, he's afraid he's gonna his health I, is gonna decline and he's gonna I, die. That's I, that's I, what I, he thinks. I, I don't understand it. Like they got brought up on on the Kurt Robert show. Like how can you be seventy eight years old, knowing you have a shit ton of money, like more money than anyone knows what to do with, and right. still, you, still think you need to work. He's afraid to relinquish <laughs> control. That's all. It's all well, about. He just did. Well, technically, he just did. Technically, he just did. Yep. All right. Um, let's get to the rest of my new weekend. Um, I, I'm not going to lie. I did not watch nearly as many shows as last year, mainly because I wasn't home on Friday. <laughs> so I was home Friday. And so I did not watch nearly as much as I did last year. I do want to quickly go through the weekend of shows before we get to WrestleMania. First of all, Hall of Fame. It was a good show. It was short and sweet to the point. Um, I'm not going to go through everything. Dad, don't go on a don't go on a rant, marathon rant when I say this. But any overall thoughts on the whole thing? <laughs> I, I think it was well done. Uh, having five inductees, I think, is plenty. Yes. Um, and it was very widespread. I mean, you had the Oreo reward where someone really, really deserved it. Oh yeah, of course. And and unfortunately, that person's longer here. You had the legend and Muta. You had the upcoming legend in Mysterio. You had the female, <clears throat> um, female person, and 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 basically, you you kind of covered the gambit, so no one can be offended in this. I will say this one thing: I enjoyed the whole ceremony. I, I'm still trying. To, I think Conan did his did his induction speech. Like I'm never going to be on this stage probably ever again. So I'm going to say everything I want to say in my life. 
and <laughs> praise everything and talk Spanish and talk about Mexico and go on this whole thing. I cracked up at that because I'm like, this is a man that knows he'll never be on this stage again. There's no way in hell he's going to the Hall of Fame. So this is his moment to enjoy himself. <laughs> it was actually really funny to watch that. Um, okay, Super Card of Honor, Ring of Honor, Super Card of Honor. Um, I watched I, I watched this one on Saturday morning. I thought this was a good show. I thought the production value, they upgraded all the production. They upgraded all the belts. They put a lot of money into this. Like, they yeah. did a great job with this show. Like, they did a great job. Like, I thought it was a really well done show. I did not see the pre-show because I didn't know there was a pre-show. Much like the last, probably with these Ring of Honor shows. If I don't watch them, I don't watch, on every week, I don't watch them live. Mm-hmm. So when you don't watch them live, you don't go to the pre-show. And so there was like four or five matches on the pre-show. I'm not going back to watch them. So anyone uh, how the re show went, let me know. I have no idea. Didn't watch it. Because it was an hour of some programming that I didn't bother. Like, I didn't even watch Ring of Honor programming last week because I didn't have the time. Mm-hmm. Didn't have the time. Didn't watch that. Didn't watch Rampage. Had no time. I had my own shows to watch. Uh, I'm glad I paid for this show. It was really a lot of fun. Um, they highlight some. Samoa Joe did meet Bur- be Bris- Bris- Briscoe. That surprised me. That was a big mm-hmm. surprise for me. Uh, I have a real feeling Briscoe will be holding that belt eventually. This we're, they're just waiting and waiting to do it. Right. Well, Lucha Bros won the Reach of the Sky ladder match to win the Ring of Honor Tag Team Championships. Dante Martin did get hurt in this match. The damn Martin brothers cannot stay healthy. Those two cannot stay healthy. Uh, um, the biggest surprise for me, bigger than Samoa Joe, was Kazucho Shibata winning. I, winning the ROH Pure Championship from Wheeler Yuta. This stunned me. I was shocked. And wow. then he didn't even win it. He won it in dominating fashion. Like, wow. it was amazing. I was like, what am I seeing? Um, so that he happened. He kicked Wheeler's ass. It was one of those things where he literally used Wheeler's, Wheeler's game against him. It was insane. I never, Yuta had not grabbed a rope break in his last six pure matches. He was all three of them in this match. I'm like, this is crazy. I couldn't believe it. Um, It, it, it was like watching a master it really was <laughs> taking the student and basically you know the student being too big for his britches is like you think right. you can beat me Shh, okay let's go all right um and then Claudio Pasanelli did beat Eddie Kingston to retain the ROA championship I'm not a fan of this move but I think Eddie's gonna win the title eventually um they did end the show is setting up I think something with the um Bakbo Combat Club and Kingston and Shibata so that's interesting for the future I'm mm-hmm. all for that um, NXT Stand and Deliver, another good show. A good show by their Sanders. Sal, you actually did watch this one. So your thoughts on NXT Stand and Deliver, overall thoughts for that before we go through the big highlights? I was right about Indy. Yes. <laughs> you were. I was the only one right about Indy. I didn't think about I didn't think that I didn't think she was going to win at all. I honestly didn't think she was going to win. I mean, what's interesting now, the whole storyline now, is that she won... But now she is being called a beautiful champion, which is very, okay. intriguing. very intriguing. It's actually a good storyline point because now they're like they, mm-hmm. they're setting up challenges for her. Like they had Zoe Stark challenge her on Tuesday. Corey Jade came back and attacked her. Tiffany Stratton's going after her. Like she actually has actual like women wrestlers to feud with her, which is awesome. It's actually making for really good television. Even Dexter Loomis. Well, Dexter Loomis wasn't on this week, but Dexter did help her. That was cool. Yeah, the way he did it was just. Uh... No, was I laughed so hard because his head like between her legs. I don't come fast. And her won the ladder match to win the NXT championship. There you go. I said say it real fast. Um, watching Dexter Lumis pop out, the crowd go crazy for him, and then climb up, then help her climb up the ladder <laughs> with his head between her legs made me laugh so damn hard. Uh-huh. Uh, like, and the funny part, is, would... the funny part is, it's like. Technically, storyline, he's, her, he's his, her husband. So technically, he can do whatever he wants with his head between her legs. Nobody's going to care. her. <laughs> I, I, I just... I mean, I'm, not, mood. I'm just saying. <laughs> I always... And, and I was praying to make sure that, hey, don't slip off the ladder. Please don't slip off the ladder. Especially when you're carrying Indy and all of a sudden she slips off your shoulders. Not a good thing to do. Nope. Um. Yeah, the other thing I will say quickly is... um. What was I saying? Uh, Alpha Fire and Isla Dawn, those crazy kinky bitches, they won the they won the NXT Women's Tag Team Championship and finally encountered James. I am so sick of this, this story, but I still want to see how it ends. Um, I'm so done with it, but I'm happy to see you continue. It's weird. Um, by the way, Wesley did retain. So did um, Gallus, because Joe Coffey is back. Um, that's interesting. 
And the big main event was Carmelo Hayes beating Braun Breaker to win yeah. the NXT Championship. And then on Tuesday, Braun Breaker turned heel. We had a double turn on Tuesday night where Carmelo turned face and Braun turned heel by breathing yeah. up Carmelo and Trick. I was stunned. That was one of the most surprising ends of the NXT I've seen in a long, long time. I <laughs> never saw it coming. No way in hell. I thought it was like a send-off for Braun. We're done. All of a sudden, he closed like Carmelo. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> I mean, you know, he, he, he was gracious at stand and deliver, and all of a sudden, now come NXT, it's like you got time to think about it, so what are you going to do? You're going to react. And he did. Yeah, I was stunned, but I was happy about it too. I was stunned. Um, I mean, where else in the world of NXT can you have people treating, you know, babyface and and and, and uh, heels in a, in a matter of moments? Very true. I thought it was well done, and I thought it was entertaining, and I'm I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued now more than I was and than anything else. Braun Breaker in a very very long time. Since we're on NXT, we also have to uh, mention that there are uh, a tag team that will no longer be with NXT. Oh, yeah. Well, really good veterans after the release, and they're released. It, I'm not going to bullshit you. It's not that big of a deal to me. No, I mean. It really isn't that big of a deal. They, were, sorry, but they, weren't, they weren't used properly or correctly. And I think they had no, they didn't know what to do with them. Period. As I said to you, and I said to Sal, and I said to Mandy. Mm -hmm. They they were the third most important part in a faction nobody cared about. Basically, <laughs> that's a they're they're in the schism as a tag team. They, they everyone likes them as, as rules of veterans. They went in the schism. Nobody cared about the schism, but they're they're third most people behind Joe Gacy and Eva. <laughs> More people care about Eva than them. So I can't blame them for not wanting to be in the company anymore. I really don't blame. Them. And then their match gets pushed to the pre-show. So, like, I don't really blame them at all for wanting to leave. Well, let's see what happens with Joe G.C. and you. see what happens. Uh, moving on, other shows. I know you guys didn't see. I'll talk real quickly. Impact New Japan, Multiverse of Madness. I was very disappointed by this show. I paid for this show. And so I can say, I was very disappointed. Yay. The venue sucked. The venue sucked. <clears throat> Lighting was terrible. Um, the, show the, wasn't sound. the show wasn't that good. I would. I understand they were dealing with injuries. They lost Osprey. They lost Josh Alexander. They lost Mickey James. I get it. Mm -hmm. You lost three of your big people. I understand. But come on, put on a more entertaining damn show. You're a part of WrestleCon. This is not a good show, and I was disappointed. Really disappointed by this because I enjoyed their pay per view last year. Like I really enjoyed it last year, and this year was really disappointing. So, would you say the production quality overall sucked? Um. Okay. Do you, do you remember Ring of Honor Television? And um, they they had like a spotlight on the ring, yeah, and yeah. All the, all the crappy old TV that was better than this. Because <laughs> wow. the reason they left the ring, they that's, moved that's, the spotlight. <laughs> that that's that's when Ring of Honor was on HD Net. Yeah, no, okay. think about this. At least when they left the ring, they moved the spotlight over to the wrestlers outside the ring. <laughs> Didn't even do that. <laughs> what are you not Come paying on. these people? You're not paying these people enough to do the right thing. How bad it? this was? I was stunned how bad it was, but Perfect. not bad. Over in the collective, the two shows I watched from the collective, George you Nell's know, Spring Break Six, fantastic fucking show. I had so much fun watching the show. It was great. Headlined by fucking um, Speedball Mike Bailey and um, and Vikingo. That was one of the headline matches of this show. Like, fucking amazing! Wow, that that match. And then okay. every big gay brunch, as always, great show. Really enjoying myself. I, I love that show so much. I know no half the same people on it, but I end up having a lot of fun anyway. <laughs> and there is a UK version coming. I know our boy John's going next month. And we'll and we'll talk to him about that. Mm -hmm. comes on for um double or nothing. Um oh one more thing from NXT before I leave and we go to WrestleMania. Um did you hear the announcement? That NXT is running a, a running a PLE head to head with double or nothing. <laughs> yep. And and, and, and Sal is and, shaking his head. Sal is shaking his head. And I am laughing because what's funny about it is it's Memorial Day weekend. If you're ordering the AW show, you're watching it live. I'm just saying, you're watching it live, and then you're watching the NXT show the next day when we're all home from work. 
So everyone's going to make a big stink out of this. And at the end of the day, if you're wearing the AEW show, it's not that big of a deal. But it's then very, very it funny. On Saturday. What? Then they should have done it on Saturday. Well, Saturday they're doing the Saudi show. The Saudi I'm show? Saturday? I'm not joking. Yes. That Saturday is the Saudi show. Oh. <laughs> I'm not even joking. Because the That's King of the Ring, we, we won't be talking about it on here, but the King of the Ring, Queen of the Ring show in Saudi Arabia is on Saturday that weekend. Ugh. <laughs> and they should have done it Saturday at night. I, I, I'm probably going to be during the day. I'm wow. just telling you that's what they did. So there's literally <laughs> going to be th- three shows in two days. One of them we will cover on here because we don't cover Saudi shows. But that's just what's going on that weekend. All right, so, let's get to WrestleMania. So save time. Instead of going to every single match, every single thing, every single thing, blah, 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 I started this year with the WrestleMania superlative, and we go through, and we go around the corner, around the horn here, and we talk about what we think here. So best match of the weekend, I'll start because then you guys can think about it. I already have my answer straight up, and that would be the triple threat for the Intercontinental Championship match between um, Gunther, Sheamus, and Drew. Oh my God, that fucking match was amazing, and I loved every second of it. My favorite part was I texted you, Sal, and I said... If, you, if this crowd is telling you that three men just beating the shit out of each other can get over without doing anything special, they're literally just beating the shit out of each other for 20 minutes, and the crowd was electric for it, and that shows that it can still happen. So, go ahead. Uh, mine was I, kind of a tie, that, and the uh, the showcase, the men's showcase. Oh, yeah, was, that, was, that was so much better than it deserved to be. <laughs> yeah, I was very entertained by that. Uh, I was definitely sports entertained. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um and uh, yeah, like you said, it was like 80,000 times better than what it should have been. I agree, maybe because of the talent in the match, it was something to do with it. <laughs> I'm done. Match of the weekend for WrestleMania. I gotta go with the tag team championship with uh, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and the, the Usos. I agree. I, I that. mean, I like that. I like that one. it went back and forth, and how many times did they did look like they were basically using Sammy as a punching bag? <laughs> that and, man can sell. That man can fucking sell. And <laughs> all of a sudden, he takes in Kevin at the last minute, and wham, bam, new energy comes to life. So, I mean, it was entertaining. You got back and forth. You got emotional. You were invested emotionally into it. So, I mean, I, I have to say that that would be the favor of the weekend. I can give you that. I'll tie it in with best finish. I have not celebrated at the end of a match so damn much that I did at the end of that match, at the end of night one, where I literally was smiling ear to fucking ear, lost my voice from screaming at the end of that match. I have never had a finish like that before since maybe WrestleMania 30. Like, I don't remember being that, that, that into a finish since Daniel Bryan won the title. Like, it was so it, it was so crazy to watch and so much fun. So, more finishes like that, please? Because that was exciting. That was such a great ending. Sal? Yeah. Um, I don't even know what to pick here. Uh, best finish for me would be I don't know. I guess I would, yeah. I guess I would pick that match too because it was pretty edge of your seat um, for like a good chunk of like the last three fourths of the match. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, I I I would pick the the tag title match because yeah, it was it was pretty damn good. Dad, I have to agree with it. I mean, you you were so emotionally invested with the match. You wanted to stick around to see how it would end. And you were cheering for the underdogs no matter what. Yeah, I agree. It was exciting. I, I thought it was when it was all by the way. So the place apparently did not empty out right away from people that were in the building. They stayed around to celebrate with KO and Sammy the entire time. Like it, so was, I mean, it was like eight o'clock at night, so why not? <laughs> yeah, but the traffic. It's the traffic leaving. That was the problem. That's the problem in LA. It was the traffic. And and, and the crowd during this match. I mean, I want to watch the match back. I want to watch the match back without me. I mean, everyone was cheering them on, and you could feel the electricity. I'm sorry. I want to watch it back. I want to watch it back when I'm not like emotionally into it that much and like want to watch it with the crowd, but I'm not screwing my head off (laughs) myself. Um, I, I went I went worst finish, but also could be worst match finish, whichever you want to look at it. 
or what match she's going to do. And what match and what match ended worse for me? It was the women's four way tag match because yes. Ronda and Shayna won. They did nothing in this match at all. They literally did nothing except for I know Ronda was hurt, but literally they don't have a win. They don't have a win the match. Take them out of the match. Like you don't need them in the match. You don't need her there. And Ronda literally rolled in, hit her finisher, and that's all she did in the entire match. And apparently, I missed this. Apparently, Shayna lost the boot. Somewhere in there, yes. I don't know. I don't know what the hell happened there. I did, I did catch that. Yes, that was strange. That was a strange thing. Um, now, how come they, the the uh, two other teams are now in the fight for number one contendership? Like, what sense does that make? Because Ronda's hurt. That's why. Then Ronda why did they call an audible and make them lose the match? Because the whole purpose of the match Thank really you. was for the next contenders. Allegedly, because remember the three prophets did win the men's one, and then they are. I don't, I don't even know what the match was for. I don't think they know what those matches were for. I don't think they know what it was for. But um, other than that, Sal, any other finishes you're thinking of that were bad? Um, since it technically is considered a match, I'm going to say <laughs> uh, Miz versus Shane McMahon was ah! then into a triple threat. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I'll tell something funny about that. That's so funny about that. So in the um, on, on Murray's reports I was reading about, because I wanted to do the star ratings and read people's opinions. Jason Powell and Wade Keller, they both put down the match is so funny for you to review. It says Shane, it says Miz versus Shane McMahon, winner, Snoop Dogg. Correct <laughs> <laughs> me up. I laughed so hard at that. <laughs> Snoop Dogg, though, the fact that he improved that is fucking amazing. Like the fact that he improved all that was incredible to me. Yeah. But no, Shane McMahon, Terry is fucking wide. <laughs> I'm not a jump. It might be one of the funniest days I've ever seen. <laughs> Was it a quad or was it knee? It was a quad. No, it was quad. It's a quad because the joke's going around now that he um continues the family tradition of messing up his quad. Triple H did it twice. Vince did it twice in the same time. Like, it continues the family tradition. <laughs> it's the curse. Oh, my God. Dad had anything else besides those two. Oh, God. That's funny, um, though. That's funny, though. <laughs> I would have to say... Yeah, that that women's match. It was just, I mean, what was, was it? Was it knee or because of Ronda's injury that the match was really too short? It was. That was very short. It was very very short. Wait, did and she get injured was, during the match? Or no, before? she was already hurt. She was already hurt coming in. That's she went, she she coming in. Rusted like a month. She's dealing with an old injury. She's dealing with an old yeah. injury. So that's the problem. Like, so here you go. Shana does all the work, and all of a sudden, Shana didn't even people... do the work. That's the problem. Shana didn't do anything either. That's the problem. She didn't do the other, the other two just kind of like they beat themselves up. I'm like, okay, well, we're gonna pick the bones, and here we go. I couldn't that's believe it. it. Um, best entrance, without a doubt. And I'm saying right now, I'm gonna combine two here: the Dominic Mysterio. So I'm quitting Dom entered with the cops into yeah. Rey Mysterio with Snoop Dogg. Okay, let me just, I will I will say this as one big sentence for those who did not see this. It was Dominic music hit. Dominic we, we, Dominic Mysterio is, is, oh, sorry, Bad Bunny's on commentary. That's number one. Bad Bunny's on commentary. That's the first thing. And then we go to we fade to black and we cut to a jail cell. A full jail cell. And Dom Dom is in the jail cell. And they take him out in handcuffs <laughs> and put him in the back of a paddy wagon. And then they back the paddy wagon out on the stage at WrestleMania. His music hits, and they have a full police escort of him in handcuffs wearing the Rey Mysterio mask, which, by the way, was the Rey Mysterio mask from um, the Halloween Havoc. Yes. Against Eddie Guerrero. He's wearing that mask. Mm-hmm. Wearing that mask. Takes the mask off. The crowd is booing the hell out of him, which is amazing to watch. Like, how happy was that of the family? But it is all said and done. <laughs> he goes in the ring in handcuffs. They uncuff him. He gets in the ring, and all of a sudden, we hear um, a nothing but a G thing playing. And Snoop Dogg is driving a lowrider or studio through the tunnel. And then Ray, and then they go through the tunnel, and Eddie Guerrero's music hit the Viva La Rasa hits on the speaker. The place goes crazy, and then Ray gets up, and then his music hits. This is all in a matter of five, six minutes. 
This might be one of the best actress combos I've ever seen in my life. I've never seen anything like it. Like, it was so crazy. And it was such a, one thing after another. Literally one thing after another in this entrance. It was like the weirdest game of Mad Lib I've ever played in my life. And then you go over and see Stu Frog like sitting in the car. Like, sitting in the car with his, his, his custom championship belt is grooving. <laughs> it, like, it was so bizarre. But it was so much fun. Was there anything better than that, Sal? No, everything you said. <laughs> I will give I will give credit to Edge for having Slayer as his theme music. That was unsurprising. That was shocking to me. The fact that I heard Slayer on WWE programming might be one of the most surprising things I'm going to say this year. I don't <laughs> understand why he was being referred to as uh, Brood Edge. That was weird. That was weird. Never, never referred to as Brood Edge, and it wasn't even the Brood theme. I know that was weird. <laughs> that was very strange. I understood what they were trying to do because I did. I enjoyed the music, but that was strange. You're also right. Got any other thoughts besides the girl thing, or that was the top one for you as well? Uh, I thought right, the material thing, the, the material thing. Sorry. probably the most. If you have to put cutest entrance, was Bianca Belair and, and oh, true. The girl. Yes, mm-hmm. Bianca Belair and the girls. Oh, I will do what. I'll give a shout out to Roman's entrance with the pianos because I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm a sucker for any time you bring an instrument out and play someone's theme music, and it's so damn accurate. I'm always a sucker for that. So that was for me, like when you bring out like when Shitsuke had the guitarist or like John Cena had the marching band, I think Bianca had a marching band. Like I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. I always have been. Mm-hmm. So um, most surprising match and we'll go and Sal brought it up already was that fatal four-way men's match. There is no reason on any level that that match deserved to be nearly as good as it was. And for them to, and that probably why night one was so damn good because that match also was so damn good. Like mm-hmm. there's no reason why it should be that good. There was no reason for it. Oh man, Sal, anything else besides that? Um, just to be different, I'll say uh I was very highly impressed with uh Charlotte versus Rhea. I thought that was a very well done match. People mm-hmm. are calling that one of the best like championship matches of all time. People are calling it that. <clears throat> yeah. Not women's matches, one of the best championship matches of all time. Like, yeah. <laughs> so I, I really that was phenomenal. Like I did not know they had that in them. When... I had no clue they had that in them. <laughs> yeah. Dagon. My question, when they did that move in and Charlotte did the flip, did she miscalculate and plan to fall on her face, or was that part I of the... Know. I don't know. I, I'm so glad she didn't get a concussion from that. I'm so glad she never got a concussion during that. I was, ho- I was hoping that she would not break her nose again. Nose, but... neck, or concussion, anything in there. I was really worried. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it, the way it looked like she lost footing and she smacked her face pretty good, so... Um... No, I I would I would have to agree. I mean, which one's one of us? There was two answers here. <laughs> uh, I thought we were talking about the, the most surprising. Match. We were talking about yeah. he brought up Rhea versus um Rhea versus Charlotte. I was bringing yeah. up the tag match, so that's why I was wondering which one you were doing. Um, I, I I I guess the most surprising thing was um the uh, Miz and uh, Logan Paul. Oh, was Miz. That was Seth. That was Seth. That, that was Seth. Seth? That was Seth Logan. Miz was the Miz. Miz was the host. Miz was, the Miz was yeah. hanging out with Snoop Dogg all night, and the Snoop was putting yeah. him in for no reason. Is uh, oh, God. Logan, Logan's Logan Paul's business partner kind of turning on Logan Paul? No, he didn't. He didn't in, turn on him in, at all. In, no, in. Yeah, you, you you did not watch the same match, obviously. Yeah, no, 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 no. That did not how it happened. Um, who was it? KSI? Is that his name? I didn't know who the fuck he was. CJ knew yeah, who he yeah. was. CJ knew who he was. CJ went crazy. CJ went fucking. By the way, if you ever want to know, if you ever want to know what that match, the old Logan Paul thing is for, it was CJ in his room talking yep. to his friends on PS4, screaming and yelling, enjoying the living hell out of watching Logan Paul get his ass kicked. Like that's what that was for. Like that was for him. That was for him. But um, the KSI. What happened there was KSI came out dressed in a prime bottle. But that's the sentence I didn't think I'd say. <laughs> that's a pride bottle. And um, uh, and then he got pulled by Seth onto the table. And that's why Logan Paul went through the, him through a table. That's what happened there. There's yeah. no other turning on it. Seth pulled him in the way. <laughs> um, I just want, by the way, moving on, both that before I forget, the most bizarre thing about, I forgot to mention on the Mysterio entrance, was the Sammy Toast Crunch Dumb mascot that was randomly there for no reason. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes, yes, yes. Which, yes. by the way, by the way, Seth found out that was still Ruka. In the costume. Get that's, out, really? Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. That's pretty damn cool. Um, 
Another thing I do want to throw out there because the most is pointing match for the next match. You know what match surprised the shit out of me that did not disappoint me was Brock and Olmos because they got in and out fast. Like I said last week, if the only way this match is going to work is if we get in and out in like three minutes. That's exactly what they did. <laughs> we just sit there long. We opened up the, the day two with it. We in and out and it was done. So, but most disappointing, I will start here and I will say, and I'll be honest with you, the Hell in a Cell match. And I understand we had the fin injury. And apparently they shaved about 10 minutes off the match because they were worried about Finn. And I understand that. I get it. But I don't know. It just didn't work for no. me personally. It didn't work. Like it was, and I love Edge. And I really enjoyed the Demon. And I really love Hell in a Cell matches. But I don't know. I feel like they just didn't have their timing. And maybe it was the Finn injury. Maybe that's what it was. But I just didn't feel like they had their timing. And it just didn't work for me personally. Um, and I, I will always make fun of people that break out color coordinated weapons. I'll always make fun of it because I, I, as much as I laugh at gold, I, I, I love when gold does it. For some reason, anyone else does it. It's stupid. So the, the purple kendo stick. Red, red, purple and red colors that they brought out. That was weird. Um, so yeah, the Hell in a Cell match was not that good. And I really wanted it to be, I really wanted it to be a lot more than it was. So it didn't okay, live up to, the, it didn't live up to the hype. Then. No, it was... absolutely not. Absolutely. I'm happy okay. it's over. I'm happy it's over. Done with. My like, understanding is the cell they used was like the original one was. they used a long time ago. It's exactly what it was. It's exactly what it was. Sal, any, anything else besides the Hell in a Cell? I knew you were disappointed by it, G. You were texting me how bad it was, disappointed by that, where we were. Yeah. Um, yeah, aside from the obvious, which was the women's uh, showcase match, I was disappointed in. Uh, yeah, uh, definitely the, uh, the Hell in a Cell match, just because... Uh, yeah, it just it seemed all. I don't know if it was because this feud has been going on for so long, and then it took like a break, and then like no one fucking gave a shit anymore, and then they just brought it back, and I I don't know what it was, and maybe it was just a combination of things. Um, I mean, if it was cut short, yeah, I understand why, but like, I don't know, it just it didn't seem like a hell in the cell match to me. It just felt like a cage match with a, with a roof on it and with weapons. Yeah, yeah, it was weapons. Like, it was like a lethal lockdown in Impact Wrestling. <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, Dad, Dad, you agree with us or anything else you want to bring up here? We just no, talk? I'm agreeing with you. I just, as a fan, I felt cheated because I expected more, and then when more didn't come, you just kind of went, ho, 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 ho. Let's hope the next match is better. And by the way, for those that give them crap for having to stop the match for Finn, I understand why they did it. They want to make sure he didn't have a concussion, and apparently he needed what was it? Um, some twelve staples. After it was all said and done, look, like, I get it, I understand it. <laughs> it's it's I get it. Like it, I am never gonna stop and tell them don't check on somebody just in case they almost died. Right. I totally get it. <laughs> right. It was a shocking moment, yeah. and I had all the credit in the world for like I made it weapons out while we're waiting. Yeah. <laughs> we're weapons out. Like I appreciated that moment, but I don't know. Medical don't know. protocols basically our number one priority and exactly. if it's kind of you know going to a match and basically oh, no. look at how the wrestler is no i get it i understood why they did it trust me i understand um finally the what the f moment of the weekend and i'm sorry it, it is snoop dogg <laughs> it's gotta be snoop dogg saving the magic and champion man which man i'm sorry we're watching snoop dogg at the people's elbow might just be one of the ones what the fuck did i just say <laughs> <laughs> but that's in a very, very long time. <laughs> well, we're gonna get a referee, and I'm gonna leave. Well, Jesse Hart was there the whole time. It was really bizarre, but I, I, I have to be there. Um, Sal, uh, the mascots. <laughs> that, really random... bugged people. that really bugged people. <laughs> and, 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 and the random um, sponsorships, and then they had the intuit turbo tax logo up for the whole match for that first one that they sponsored and uh, the board they made it but didn't they because they didn't they um sponsored both main events or something like that and then like okay. that's how everyone found out what the main event of night one was because they're like the main event sponsored by turbo tax although that's how we found out the time team match for the main event of night one <laughs> they did that during the pre-show <laughs> and then the match was sponsored by snickers oh, oh that's, no the whole show was snickers the whole show was snickers yeah, it was so, yeah. i think the cinema toast crunch there was also at least the prime thing made sense because that made man from Logan Paul. He would do that. Like that actually right. made sense. 
like the random cinema so quick. What was that movie they were promoting during the Hell in a Cell match? That was also strange. Oh, the uh, the exorcist, uh, the Pope's yeah. exorcist or some shit. That was strange as well. Like that was bizarre. Like, yeah, I can agree with you on the weird sponsorships throughout the show. That was weird. Dad, anything else? I would say the what the fuck moment was the, the way Logan Paul came in. Oh yeah, thinking, <laughs> uh, it was, like shades of HBK. Holy crap! I give him credit for trying something, but it didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work no, he, he, at he all. Didn't, he didn't get the response he wanted, and or did he? he? Or did he? That's the best part. Or did he? <laughs> I, I, I don't think he did. And the way he came down, and then he's trying to go. Dumb shit forgot he's still tethered in with yeah, the party he wants to walk. That was very funny. That was very funny. Oh. Um, so overall, can we just all agree that night one was better than night two? Can we just all agree oh, with yeah. that? Like, uh, yeah, I would I would say so, yes. Yeah, because night one was so great. Like night one might be one of the best pay-per-view like days WWE's been on in a long, long time. Yeah. Like that was such a great first day, and then the second day was just weird. The second day was just weird and bizarre. Se- second night, uh I, all I'm gonna say is, uh, if if you want someone to break a record, then damn, you know, then don't build this up. Okay, and, well, we'll talk about it. We haven't talked about it. Nobody brought it up, so I'll bring it up real fast. The ending of the ahead. show. Sal called it last week. I'll give him credit. I'll give him all the credit in the world. Sal called it. He yes. said Rain was going to win and retain the title, and we're going for a thousand days. Sal called it. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna take it away. By the way, Sal, one thousand days is, is also Memorial Day weekend. Oh, that is Memorial Day weekend, which is the same weekend as the Saudi show and NXT and Double or Nothing. Same weekend. So there you go. He'll probably break a thousand days in Saudi Arabia. Go figure how that how that happens in this in this era. <laughs> but uh, but uh, that's that's what that is. I, okay, now looking back at it, mm-hmm. I was disappointed the moment. I was very disappointed in the moment. I'm not gonna bullshit you. I was very disappointed in the moment. But. Looking back at it, I understand what they did. I got it. I get it. I understand. Especially now that the sale happened, Roman's the face of the company. I understand why they did it. Um, I don't know. I just I and now that we're setting up Cody versus Brock, which is okay with me. I don't mind it. I don't mind that at all. I think it'd be yeah. interesting. You actually give Cody something to do that doesn't involve a championship. That'd be nice because he's only had one other feud and that was Seth. So like we had to have an actual feud that doesn't involve a championship. So I don't mind that at all. Um, so I have to ask you a question. This is going to sound like a very old person right now. Um, last <laughs> week, last week we were doing the show, and you dropped twice. LOL Bloodline wins. LOL Roman Reigns wins. Where the hell did that come from? Because I heard that on other podcasts. I've never heard that before you said it. Where did uh, that come from? <laughs> um, when Cena would win all the time, and the thing was LOL Cena wins. I've never heard that. So I never really? heard that. I never, ever heard that. Oh, really? So, okay. So I never heard it. So I was just like, where the hell did that come from? And I heard it on a different yeah. podcast, too. Yeah. So like, I don't know. I'm sorry, your thoughts on Roman winning. <laughs> um, I'm glad because I, I have a thing with people coming in automatically getting a title shot and winning it right away because I just, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like the way that gets set up. I mean, there, there, there's, there's a sequence that should follow Mm -hmm. and, you know, bringing somebody in and then having him win the Royal Rumble, which was like, you know, the most obvious thing ever, you know what I mean? Just like when Drew McIntyre won. Like, everyone knew Drew McIntyre you know what, But you know what, though? I appreciated Drew winning. I think with Cody winning, would it have been different if he didn't get hurt? And he wasn't off for eight, eight months? Would it have been no, different? Well, that would have that would have hurt. It helped, too, yeah. I'm just saying. I mean, so that was something that got brought up in other places. Of like, would it have been different if he wasn't out for eight months? Yeah. Yeah, so that's... You're going with your point. You're going with your point. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I just... I kind of wish... Just one final thought. I kind of wish the finish was honestly clean Mm -hmm. because i think it would have solidified more roman is the guy Mm -hmm. and you know how dare you think otherwise because i mean this constant outside interference bullshit now is just making him what roman does but it's what roman does yeah but it's making him look fucking weak in my opinion exactly he needs to have he needed to have a clean win so he could have showed up on monday and said F you, mm-hmm. I'm here to stay, and I'm not, and I'm not going anywhere. Like how Triple H said it, right? Mm-hmm. But 
like these constant interferences is just it's getting old it's like old news now it's like just you know you're supposed to be the thousand day champion you've had the title for three wrestlemanias in a row it's all the same reign which is insane by the way yeah. <laughs> it's insane it's the same fucking title reign you know you gotta you gotta show that you belong there and that this isn't a fluke and you know having your cousin stick his thumb in someone's fucking windpipe isn't really a a, a trophy moment you know what i mean fair enough i'm um, dad any other thoughts yeah, I think that match with Roman and uh, Cody to me was bittersweet because you had all this buildup with Cody and the vignettes and everything, and you were emotionally invested in it, and you you were hoping beyond hope that something would change, and then the ref pup happens and family comes in to save Roman's ass once again. Without family, would he have won? Probably not. But when you have family come in and basically do all your dirty work and what's left of the scraps, I mean, that's how you want to win? I mean, you want to win that way and say, yeah, okay, I'll take it? Nah, for being the head of the table, come on, prove you're the head of the table. Be a man. Have some balls and do it on your own. Don't forget the chicken. There you go. I I can't even really say much about that. But Sal, this one one last time. Fuck Cody Rhodes. <laughs> so let me say one more thing. This has nothing to do with the rest of me. I just want to vent about one thing about this. So I'm a big podcast listener. I listen to a lot of podcasts. And um, I listen to on Puck Stupid, the hockey podcast. They have a Patreon page that I have, I have subscribed to because they have a really a bunch of really cool audio on their own Patreon site. They do a wrestling show called Superplex, which is a great name. I'm not going to lie. But the, I actually, they, they, first of all, if you're going to do a WrestleMania preview show, put it up on Friday, not on Saturday. That's number one. Uh, number one. Put it up on Friday morning like we usually do the latest. Or not on like late Friday night. That's number one. <laughs> number two. So I'm like, I have an hour and a half between like finishing NXT and um, WrestleMania night one. So I'm like, I'm going to listen to this podcast because I like, I, I usually like your show. I tune in and within 15 minutes, I turned it off. Because they piss me off. Because the one thing that I hate, and I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, this is why I hate wrestling social media, is when you make other wrestling fans feel stupid. When you make other wrestling fans feel like they don't know what they're talking about, when they make other wrestling fans be like, well, you should have known that. You're, you're obviously not that big a wrestling fan because you didn't see that coming. Or you should know this person. Or blah, 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 blah. I hate that shit. It's one of my... I hate it. Hey, oh my god. It's just, I despise that attitude. And for wrestling fans out there that are listening to this, I know we have an audience listening to this. And I, I'll put this clip up for people to hear it. If this is your attitude, go fuck yourself. Because I am so sick and tired of people like like, for instance, when Vikingo came on AEW, and no one knew who he is, if you don't want Triple A, you don't know who Vikingo is, and the answer was, Google it. Instead of AEW, you know, doing the work and playing a video package or hyping it up and doing mm-hmm. something along those lines. Ended up being a great match, but I had the point. I thought I point. I point is, stop making wrestling fans feel stupid, because then all you're doing is hurting the fan base. And I'm sorry, wrestling is a niche product. We're a niche group. We don't, we're not like, I know WWE is now being, got bought by Endeavor, blah, 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 blah. But at the end of the day, we're wrestling fans. Wrestling fans are a niche group. We are not the mainstream. I hate to tell people this. We're not mainstream evil. So stop acting like everyone knows everything. I'm so sick and tired of it. I just need to get into my system. It's been bothering me for weeks. And last week, I didn't have the time because they had so much shit going on. Okay. Take a breath. Okay. I'm done now. I just need to get done on my system. Let me, let me kind of elaborate a little bit on what you said is, with the fans, you have to realize now that there's a new fan base with the younger audience and the kids. And here's the thing. Kids, the kids aren't vested, <laughs> or how can I say Kids don't know the ins and outs of the business like adults do. So, I mean, the kids enjoy it for what it is, entertainment. I don't even worry about kids. I don't even worry about the kids. I'm worried about people like, say, Mandy, who does not follow other things, and then she's watching AEW confused because she doesn't know who people are. Right. Right. Google it is not an answer. Fuck, I hate that. Google it's not an answer. Sorry. I just it just bothered bothering me for weeks. I need to get out of the system. Got it. Okay. That being said, let's get out of here. Um tradition, tradition, we end with the night two main event winner. And that would be one Roman Reigns. And by the way, 
for the first time in probably, I don't know, a decade, we actually are ending the show with the same song two weeks in a row because that never happens. That never <laughs> actually ever happened. It didn't happen on purpose. It was just how things happened this week. <laughs> um, so, Sal, take it away. Go. Uh, for more information on our show, including where you can find us on social media uh, or watch the show on YouTube, go to theblakesoncho.com. Don't forget to comment and, or leave a rating and review, and we will read it on the show. Um, that's your thing. Go. Hey, it's always it's been your pleasure, and please, if you happen to have a local independent wrestling organization where you preside, please go and watch these people perform. These are the young men and women that are coming up in the world of professional wrestling, sports, entertainment, and they want to get to that next level to go on to a major corporation and company, and you'll be amazed on what they can do and how they entertain you. Uh, and these kids, and I, I got to say kids because they're, they're younger than that, hell of all younger than I am, are there to make sure that you're entertained and that you get your money's worth. And that's what it is. So go picture these people and watch them grow and develop. All right. Well, tomorrow you will hear my review on Saturday of C2E2. It's, a, it's not that long of a show. It's about two and a half hours. I was there for one day and I only did a couple of panels, but the, the Boy and Drill panel was so much fun. So definitely go and listen to that. Also, there'll be clips on our YouTube page from the Boy and Drill panel. Next week, me and Dad will be here. We're going to be reviewing AW Dynamite and Rampage that we're going to be seeing with Mandy and CJ next week here in Milwaukee. So that'll be on next Friday's show. That being said, let's get out of here. I'm Blake. Hello. I'm Mark. And you've been listening to the Blake and South Show with Mark. Have a good day, everybody. Love you guys. See ya. Thank you so very much. Goodbye and good night. Bye bye, bitch. <laughs>